Von Fumetti. And every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific, I go live on YouTube, in my Facebook group, and on LinkedIn, giving you everything you need to grow your bookkeeping business. And so today, we're going to be talking about starting our bookkeeping business, okay? So some people have already started and are growing. Some people are still on the fence wondering if bookkeeping is right for them. And they're wondering, what is bookkeeping? What do bookkeepers actually do? And that's what we're going to be talking about today. In fact, I'm going to go through uh, what we do and then show you most of what we do in QuickBooks. Okay. QuickBooks is the software that we use to do bookkeeping. All right. So as I said, I am live on YouTube in my Facebook group and LinkedIn. So depending on what platform you're on, I encourage you to jump over to the other platforms and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you're notified of new videos. Join my Facebook group. Lots of great conversation happening in there. You're able to ask questions and get all kinds of great advice there. And then finally, connect with me on LinkedIn. Okay, so that way you're notified and you can stay in touch and you can grow your business. Emily, uh, you said uh, you missed... <laughs> We missed you. So, uh, yeah, I was gone last week. Uh, so I'm glad to be back, uh, back in the saddle. So uh, that's basically what we're going to be talking about today. Um, uh, you know, what bookkeeping is, what it looks like. Uh, let's, let's actually like visually see it as opposed to just talking about it. We all know it's great. We all know bookkeeping is great. It's a valuable skill that um, small businesses need. You know, it's... <laughs> You know, you hear me talk about how great bookkeeping is, and I'm not the only one talking about how great it is. There's lots of people out there talking about how great it is to start a bookkeeping business. And um, it can be challenging sometimes because all you need is a, com a computer, free QuickBooks account. I'll show you how to get that later. Um, and you can make really great money. Uh, so it sounds like, hey, is this like get rich quick type stuff? It's bookkeeping. I mean, it's, 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 it's an actual job. It's something that small businesses need. Um, so it's legitimate. Okay. So it's legitimate. It's you're, you're performing a valuable service for small businesses. Now, one thing I want to point out when we talk about, you know, how valuable this service is, uh, I have a lot of people that come up to me and they say, well, Bill, uh, I searched for how much a bookkeeper makes online. And it says like 20 bucks, 20 bucks an hour. And here you're saying that people can be making like up to 150 bucks an hour. And uh, the difference is when you're searching online, looking for how much bookkeepers get paid. They're telling you how much you get paid if you're an employee working for someone else, making someone else money. All right. They're not going to, they're not going to be paying you, uh, as much as they would pay, uh, as much as like a, you could get as a business owner. Okay. As a business owner, you keep a hundred percent of, of everything. If you're working for someone else, well, they've, they've got to be something left over for them to take. Okay. Uh, so that's the important distinction there. You're always going to make more owning your own business. doesn't matter what you're doing, whether it's a marketing agency, you're going to own, you're going to make more money running a marketing agency than you are working for another company in as a marketing person. Okay. So uh, that's, that's the big thing there. The other big difference is that we don't charge our clients hourly. Okay. We charge our clients based on the value we're able to create for their business. So when we talk about, um, when we talk about $20 an hour versus $150 an hour, we're not going to business owners saying, hey, pay me 150 bucks an hour. OK, we're taking a look at what their business looks like, how we can help. And then based on that information, we're coming up with a flat fee. OK, in order for me to help you get all these great benefits, we're going to come up with a flat fee. Here's what it's going to be. And generally what that works out to be, you know, whether it's 500 a month, 1000 a month, $2,500 a month, uh, it works out to be in the $150 an hour range when you talk when, when you take a look at how much time you're spending on the books. OK, so wanted to point that out real quick. Uh, that's the difference um, uh, in, in that. So this is a valuable skill. Uh, it's relatively simple to pick up, you know, as with anything, there's some work that's involved in learning it. It's a new language for most people. When I was starting out as a 38 year old taking accounting one at Santa Monica College with a bunch of 18 year olds, it was like a foreign language. I thought I had I used to be good in school. I thought I just lost my touch, um, but it starts to click. Okay. It's a new language, but you're learning something pretty substantial here. Okay. You're learning something that can provide you an incredible income. 
uh, year after year. And one day you can even sell it or hand it down to your kids or what have you. So um, taking the time to learn this valuable, relatively simple skill uh, is time really, really well spent. Okay. So if I'm glancing down from time to time, I'm looking at my notes. I want to make sure I cover everything. So, um, okay. So we talked about how great it is. We already know that. So what is bookkeeping? Okay. At, at, at the end of the day, what is bookkeeping? It's generally in its simplest form is that we are just basically keeping track of all of the financial transactions for a business. Okay. Business owners, they start their businesses to make money. Okay. And they've got to keep track of that money. They don't know if they're making money unless they're keeping track of it. So what happens is when they make money, when they sell things or they provide services and customers pay them, we need to track that. That's income. Okay, that's money coming in. That's income, also known as revenue. They buy things. Okay, they buy things. They may need office supplies. Okay, they may, may need equipment. They may need lots of things that they spend money on. Those are expenses. Okay, those are expenses. We keep track of those things. Okay, we just put them in the right buckets. Okay, you're going to hear me talk about uh, categorization and organization and putting things in the right buckets. Uh, what that means is we're taking all these transactions and we're putting them in the right places, okay, in QuickBooks, into the right accounts, into the right buckets, okay. Office supplies, all those Office Depot purchases should go over to office supplies, okay. You know, when they take clients out to, to lunch, those should go into meals and entertainment, okay. So we should be separating these things into the right spots. And there's other accounts that we're going to talk about as we kind of get into the things, okay. So I should, um, I should also point out that I am live here as as you know, so you are more than welcome to type into the chat or the comments as we go here. And I will answer some questions as as we go, if they're kind of tied to what we're talking about. But you're welcome to ask questions about anything. And if it's not to, tied to what I'm talking about at that moment, I'll answer it towards the end. Okay, I'll answer it towards the end. Um, so I uh, feel free to, to type those things in. Emily, you try, uh, you say you tried affiliate marketing, blogging and Shopify shops and made nothing. Bookkeeping sounds great. Bookkeeping is great, but I will say, I, I will say this as with anything. Okay. As with anything, your mileage may vary. You get out of it, what you put into it. Okay. You get out of it, what you put into it. If you see people having success with something, if you see people having success with genuine success, okay, I know I like I've seen a lot of affiliate marketing and blogging and different stuff like that all out there as well. And sometimes it's hard to really tell are people being real? Or is this success real that they're showing us? You know, if, if you're able to determine whether or not it's real, and I do, I, I, I go a long way to post, you know, first and last names of the people that I work with in my mentorship program, I interview people on my website, um, boomingbookkeeper.com. Uh, and, you know, so that you can make a, a, a good decision about whether or not these are real success stories, but it doesn't go onto the QuickBooks, find a pro advisor website. Okay. It's a directory of tons and tons of bookkeepers. It's a great marketing tool, actually. Um, these are bookkeepers doing, doing well with their own businesses. Okay. You don't have to look very far, but you get out of it, what you put into it. Okay. If you, if you, you know, rush through the training, if you slap up a couple of profiles and then just expect to kick back and watch the money roll in, that's not really giving the opportunity what it deserves. Okay. And, and you want to give it, uh, give it what it deserves to be successful as with anything. So yes, you can do really well. Zach, you said make really good money. Absolutely. Uh, as long as you're willing to put in the work to learn it and also learn how to get clients. Okay. So that being said, let's jump into it. Let's talk about, um, let's talk about bookkeeping, what it is. I'm going to talk about like kind of two, two pieces here. The first I'm going to talk about are some of the more common things that we do in QuickBooks. Okay. For for, I've got lots and lots of clients. And for most of my clients, all I do are these common things. Okay. The same things. And these common things are things that you will do for all your clients. And then there will be some things that some, some things, some piece, pieces and parts of bookkeeping that you only do for certain clients because they only need uh, only certain clients need these additional kind of services. Okay. So I'm going to talk about two things. Um, so let's just jump right into QuickBooks, right? Let's just see what we're dealing with. Okay. So um, let me share my screen 
real quick here. Where are we at? Okay, we're right here. Boom. Okay, so we're going to be in the QuickBooks online test drive file. Okay, it's called test drive. Uh, it's a sample company. It's a sample QuickBooks online file that you can use and you can play around with it and practice with it and do all kinds of stuff. And it's a really great way for you to just get your feet wet and see, okay, what are, what are we doing here? Okay, what are we doing? A little bit later, I'll be talking about how to get that free QuickBooks account if you don't already have one. Inside that free account, there's also some free training in there. Okay, free training, a free certification. Um, and so it's another opportunity for you to get into it and try this out. Hey, is this is this for me? It's a it's a pretty simple, um, uh, simple skill we have here. Um, if, if you're willing to take the time to learn it, you can do some amazing things. And it's like, I'm still blown away by the fact that you just need a computer and this QuickBooks is free and there's free training and it's like you can just like get started. OK, so uh, I'm going to show you how to get that a little bit later. OK, so um, the the sample company, if you want to find it, just type in QuickBooks online test drive or QuickBooks online sample company. Uh, this will come up uh, this Web page here and you can come down here and click this. OK, and this will be a version of QuickBooks Online that you can play around with. It's got some test data in it. Now, I should say that they do a really good job of keeping this updated with all the latest and greatest features, um, but it is a sample company. It's got test data in there. It's not perfect, okay? It's not perfect, uh, but it's it's like, because they're constantly kind of updating things, uh, but it's super valuable to have so that you can just kind of play around with it, okay? so. First thing I'm going to do is just kind of talk about what we're looking at here, okay? And, and during this entire video, I'm going to be covering things from an overview, overview, like broad strokes, okay? I'm not going to get down into the nitty gritty details and do a training on how you, you know, how you do, how, like everything that you'll ever encounter, okay? That's not the goal here. It's to give you a general idea of what we're doing, okay? And so what we're looking at now is kind of like the homepage, okay? The homepage uh, of where we log in. The name of this business is Craig's Design and Landscape landscaping services, okay? And so they give you this kind of cool little graphical representation of money in and what happens, you know, as we make money, as our business owners make money, money going out, you know, paying bills and expenses and things like that, and then some reporting stuff. Um, I don't really use this this sort of uh, graphic graphical representation of kind of the stuff we do, but it can kind of help you visualize the process of some of the stuff we do, okay? But what I want to focus on are, you know, the three areas here uh, that I want to explain, because those are going to be the, the where you live most often. Uh, first is going to be this left sidebar menu. OK, these are think of these as the different sections of QuickBooks. OK, there's a section for banking and we're going to go into some of these sections. But obviously, if we're categorizing transactions, most of those transactions happen in the bank and credit card accounts, right? They spend money, they make money. That all runs through the bank and credit card account. So you can connect those. Okay. Sales, that's making money, customers, you know, all that fun stuff. Uh, you can uh, pr uh, you can do what's called cash flow projections, which is like, okay, we know how much money we have in the bank today, but um, what is what does our cash balance look like into the future? you know, weeks and months into the future, considering what upcoming bills we have coming in, what sales we expect, things like that. This is a more advanced feature that we really don't, for the most part, we don't perform as bookkeepers. Well, let me clarify that. You Anybody can offer like cash, this cash flow forecasting. Generally speaking, it's not part of technically bookkeeping. OK, it starts to get into like advisory services, which is like, OK, great. We've got really, really great data, bookkeeping data. Now, how do we use this to grow our business? OK, and so that would be advisory service. So we're not going to really go over this. Um, uh, and um, it's not a service that um, that you need to be providing to your clients. OK, I just want to kind of go through this menu here. Expenses, that's money going out. OK, projects are, are where you can. Uh, we're not going to go over this today, but projects can be helpful for certain types of businesses who want to track uh, not just money coming in and money going out on an overall basis. But what about if they have individual types of projects that they work on? You know, maybe it's a home builder, you know, and they 
build homes, you know, and so they want to see performance and numbers for each house. Okay. And so they could split those, um, split those up into projects. All right. Payroll. We're going to touch on this a little bit today. Okay. It's another section of QuickBooks reports. Okay. We're doing great work. That's not where, that's not where it ends. Okay. We want to be generating the reports, which is the representation of the data that we've performed that we give to the clients and we help them interpret it. What do the numbers mean? How did we do last month? Um, and, and how do we use that data to grow our business? Okay, we're going to get into that. Uh, taxes, this is not income tax. You know, a lot of people, there's a lot of confusion, bookkeeping. If I do bookkeeping, do I have to do taxes as well? Absolutely not. In fact, it's a good idea not to be doing both. Okay, um, it is very, very challenging to, as a bookkeeper, you should be helping clients make as much money as possible. Okay, and that's a big job. It's a big job. Taxes, if you're going to do taxes, you should be proactive in helping clients pay as little tax as possible, not just doing the tax return, but helping them pay as little in tax as possible, being strategic. It's very hard to stay on top of all of that and do everything. Plus, it helps to have two sets of eyes on things, okay? So no income tax, that's not bookkeeping, okay? But what Ta the taxes that we talk about here, primarily sales tax, okay? Some clients that we have, they may have to file sales tax returns. They may collect sales tax from their customers that they then have to send off to the state, okay? Like when you go to the store, if you're paying sales tax, that's not, that's not money that that store gets to keep. That's money that they're just collecting to then pay to the state, okay? So we can help with that as part of, um, as part of bookkeeping. Now, the rest of these things down here, aren't aren't things that we deal with frequently okay quickbooks does a lot okay it's a really great tool that does a lot and for the most part uh, we use a small subset of of the functionality for most of our clients okay but it has the ability to track mileage you know you can um quickbooks capital is like you can get a loan from quickbooks um you know you can connect different apps to QuickBooks to help automate a lot of what we do, which is really cool. We're not going to get into that, but um, that can help uh, automate and streamline a lot of what we do. Okay. So the sidebar here is one, um, one of the ways that we're going to be moving around QuickBooks. Okay. That's one thing. The next thing is this new button up here. Okay. You can create all kinds of transactions, right? We talked about transactions, money coming in. Those are related to customers money going out, you know, expenses, those are related to what are called vendors. Okay, vendors are people we pay, okay, for goods and services. All right. Uh, again, you have some payroll activities that you can do. And then you've got just kind of some other, you know, random things uh, here, you know, other other uh, transactions that, need, that you can create. Okay. And uh, I'll touch on some of these. Okay. Now, one thing I, I want to be very clear on is whenever you're looking at something new, Whenever we're looking at something new, we're like, whoa, what is all this stuff? This is a lot. So you might be feeling like, wow, there's a lot under here. I don't even know what half these things are, or I don't know what any of these things are. It's just stuff you don't know yet. Okay. It's all very straightforward stuff. And it's just something uh, you haven't seen yet. Okay. And so understand that it's just a learning process. Okay. It's a learning process. I'll mention a little bit later um, about how long it takes generally for most people to learn QuickBooks and to come up to speed. Um, it's generally six to eight weeks, okay? Six to eight weeks, not a long period of time to learn a really, really valuable tool that you can build a business around, okay? So if this menu looks like it's a lot, hey, don't worry, okay? It, it, it all makes sense. It all starts to click once you're exposed to it. Okay, it's all pretty straightforward. And then the third area that I'm just going to really briefly cover is this gear menu. Okay, this gear menu. We all know gear menu, that's like settings. And so if we click on that, that's a lot of settings, company settings. You know, these are lists, different lists that we would use in our um, uh, in QuickBooks, things that we would set up. Uh, we're not going to dive into those things. And then it's just some other tools that we can use. Okay, again, QuickBooks does a lot, but we don't use uh, all of QuickBooks for all of our clients, for the most part, it's just a small subset of what QuickBooks offers. Okay. But it has a lot. It's a really powerful tool. Okay. So those are, those are sort of the three 
navigate i'll say navigation um areas that that you just want to be aware of you can move around to the different sections of quickbooks here you can create new transactions here and then finally uh, you can adjust some settings here okay that's pretty much it now let's get into kind of what we do okay as bookkeepers what we do and if you click on the new menu there's all these transactions we we can create you know we can create an invoice you know what's an invoice well it's an invoice is something that our client if we're their bookkeeper our client wants to send to their customer so that they can get paid right hey here's an invoice please pay me right um uh, we can create a bill okay somebody sends us an invoice now when we receive the invoice it's not an invoice it's a bill now okay we've got to pay that okay we can create these we can create credit card expenses. Okay, we can create all of these transactions, but we don't do a whole lot of that. Okay, bookkeeping and QuickBooks and technology has evolved to the point where what we do as bookkeepers in the old days, you know, if you, when, when you think about bookkeeping, it's more like um, you used to think about like these, these old, older people with these, you know, looking stressed out with a calculator with a bunch of, you know, um, or an adding machine with a bunch of, you know, tape, you know, printing tape running out of it and looking stressed out and with all this paper and, uh, you know, it was all manual. It's come a long way. It has come a long way. It's just QuickBooks and QuickBooks automates a lot of what we do. And so one of the first, the thing we'll, we'll do with all of our clients, regardless of what their needs are, is we will connect instead of you know, adding things manually for the most part, we will connect their bank and credit card accounts. If you click on this banking tab here, you will go to what are called the bank feeds. Feeds, right? Okay, feeds. So it's feeding data into QuickBooks. You can connect the client's bank and credit card accounts in QuickBooks, okay? And then the transactions are downloaded into QuickBooks. How awesome is that? No data entry, none of that stuff. Okay, we just look at transactions that come in from the bank and then we decide where they go. Okay, that's it. So as you can see here, we've got, you know, they've got a checking account, they've got a savings account, and it looks like they have a credit card. And QuickBooks just downloads these things automatically. And one of the things we do is we just jump in and it, it varies how often we do this work. Sometimes we'll do it if it's a really you know, larger company, uh, and they're more active, we might jump in here every day or every other day. Okay. I have clients where I only jump in and categorize these transactions once a month. Okay. And then we can do it, um, you know, at any time in between as well. So, uh, depending on the client, uh, you're not going to be in the books every single day. Okay. You're not going to be in the books every single day. And that's how you manage lots and lots of clients. You're not in the books every day. That's also how you can take a vacation. Okay, some people wonder, like, can I take a vacation? What if I get sick? What about all these things? Uh, well, you're not in the books every day. Okay, so you're gonna be fine. <laughs> okay, uh, all right. So once we, uh, once we get these things connected, all these transactions from the bank are downloaded into QuickBooks and now it's up to us to put them in the right spots. Okay, and so when I say put them in the right spots, what does that mean? Before we get into putting these in the right spots and putting them in the right buckets and categorizing these things. Let's back up. Let's take a step back and let's look at reports. Okay. Cause this is going to really help us do this work. There are two main reports that we kind of focus on. Um, the, uh, when we, when, we, you know, as bookkeepers, um, there's really, you know, other reports as well that you can, you know, that, that you'll work with and that will help provide information to both you and your client. But the two most popular ones and the ones that we'll just focus on today um, are the profit and loss and the balance sheet. Okay. Profit and loss is just that simple. It's a report that shows you how much profit or loss that your business has sustained over a period of time. Okay. So let's just take a look at it. Again, this is sample data. Okay, it's just sample data. And it's going to tell us for a period of time how much money this business made or how much money they lost. Okay, and so uh, first thing you're going to want to do is say, okay, well, what period are we looking at? Okay, well, I want to look at how much money we made last month. Okay, so you can change the time frame. 
Okay, so if I go down to last month and click run report, I'm going to see here that I'm looking for the pro looking at the profit and loss for last month, August 2022. Okay, and I don't know how they do this, but they keep the dates on all these transactions updated. <laughs> so it's like you're always getting whenever you run last month, it's always last month at, in real life. And so if you look down here, um, I'm going to walk through this really, really quickly. But at the top here, we have income. Okay, this is money coming into the business. Okay, and this business has lots of different types of things that they do. It's a landscaping company. So they do labor and they, you know, have income from, I guess, design. So they might design someone's, you know, landscaping, you know, pest control services. They've got different types of income. Lots of clients will just have one type of income. Okay, for example, a chiropractor, they provide chiropractic services, okay, the adjustments, okay, and so they might just have that one income, okay, uh, and lots of lots of customers do. This one, you know, it just has different types of income. Sometimes it's helpful to see how much money are we making on our pest control services, how much money are we making on our design services, things like that, okay. So we could just even collapse this down and just look at income as a whole. Okay. Then you have what are called cost of goods sold. These are expenses. These are expenses that are related to this income. In other words, um, cost of goods sold is like, um, you know, well, in order to, to provide these pest control services, we have to buy the, like the pesticides, right? We don't need the pesticides if we don't provide the services. Okay. So they're, it's very closely related to that income. So that's, that's what differentiates a cost of goods sold expense from a regular expense. Okay. Think about these expenses down here as overhead, things you have to pay for regardless if you make any money. Okay. You got to pay for um, rent. You got to pay for rent no matter if you make money or not. That's overhead. Okay. So that's how you can, can look at this. So you've got your income. You've got your cost of goods sold expenses here. Okay, that leaves you with a gross profit here, which is just, you know, your income minus the costs that you incurred to generate that income. And then you've got all your overhead expenses. Look at all these familiar expenses, advertising. If you run a business, you should be advertising. You know, you're driving around, you're using up fuel, and you've got equipment rentals and insurance. And look at down here, you've got accounting. Hey, you got to pay your bookkeeper, right? Um You've got, you know, legal fees. You've got all these different expenses, okay? You total them up. And then what you can do, I mean, they got, looks like they got 2,000 miscellaneous expenses. Then what you can do is you take your income, you subtract your cost of goods sold, you subtract your expenses, and, well, your expenses, and then you are left with profit or loss. As you can see here, last month, this business ran at a loss, Okay. They're not doing so good. All right. So that's what a profit and loss is. It's very simple. It's income minus expenses. Okay. That's all it is. And at the end of the day, are we making money? Are we losing money? If you don't have this, if a business owner doesn't have this, they don't know how well they're doing. They have no idea how well they're doing. This is really, really important. This is, um, this is especially important when you uh, consider that you can run a profit and loss for like the last six months and you can separate it by month and you can see, okay, how are we doing from month to month? Last month, our payroll was super high compared to other months. Why was that? We can dive into those things and understand them and really help help business owners. You can understand how, how, uh, how um, powerful that information is. So that's the profit and loss. And so each of these items on here is an account. It's called an account. Design income is an income account. Okay. Cost of goods sold. It's a cost of goods sold account. Okay. It's an, like an expense account. Advertising is an expense. Accounting is an expense. Okay. Uh, or accounting is an expense account. Okay. These are all uh, accounts. Okay. And as transactions come in, we decide which one of these accounts to put them into. Okay. That's it. All right. Let's jump over real quick and look at the balance sheet account because this is the other um, important report that we usually send clients. And I'm not going to go too deep into this, uh, but just to give you a broad overview. Uh, a, a balance sheet is, lists assets at the top. These are things that you own, okay? Things that we have, things that have value to us, okay? Checking account. I got money in my checking account. That's an asset, okay? Savings account. Accounts receivable. These are invoices that, that I've sent out 
to people, but I haven't been paid for yet. Okay, that is an asset to me. That's money that's coming to me. That's something that has value to me, those invoices. You know, we have fixed assets. Those are trucks. Okay, those are assets. I got a truck that's valuable to me. These are all things I own. Okay, you've got liabilities. Okay, well, if assets are things you own, liabilities are things you owe. Okay, they do not have value to you. They're the opposite. Okay, they you owe money. Okay. Accounts payable. These are bills. When you hear accounts payable, think bills. Okay. I owe that money. That's a liability. I've got credit cards. I owe that money. That's a liability. I've got loans. Okay. I got notes payable is another term for a loan. I've got all these loans. Okay. That's, that's a liability. Okay. And then we've got equity. That's what's left over. Okay. If you take what you own, your assets, and you subtract your liability, your liabilities, hopefully that number is positive, which means you have positive equity in the business, okay? The net, the, like the value of your business, okay? Equity is what's left over, okay? So that's basically what the balance sheet shows you. And again, all of these are accounts, okay? Checking is an asset account, okay? Fixed assets, that's an asset account, okay? These are assets. All of these are different types of accounts, loan accounts, credit card accounts. These are all accounts. And the reason I keep talking about accounts is because when these transactions come in from the bank and credit card accounts, we have to decide what accounts they go on. And are they going to be income accounts on the PL? Are they going to be expense accounts on the PL? Are they going to be assets or liabilities or equity on the balance sheet? Those are all your accounts. Okay, those are all the, the different types of accounts. So it's up to us to determine which specific type of account it should go in, that these transactions should go in. So let's jump back into the bank feeds and take a look at how this works. Okay, how easy this really is. Okay, so here we are in the checking account and we scroll down here. I'm not going to use every look at every transaction because, again, this is test data. Um, so we're just going to look at, you know, just a, a few few transactions here and there. Uh, but let's take a look at this transaction here. What we see down here is this is what, the bank detail. That's what is going to be imported from the bank. OK, so it doesn't just give us the date and the amount. It gives us like a description. Like if you were to look at your bank statement or log into your bank online, it kind of gives you a description. You know, this one says A1 rental. Maybe you'll see McDonald's. Maybe you'll see Office Depot. That's going to be our clue to tell us where this should go. As we can see, this says spent. It's $800. That's money going out. Okay, this is likely an expense. What did they buy for $800? A1 rental. You, you let me say this you won't you will know where most transactions go what account they go into uh for the most part okay just just because you know we know that office depot is office supplies and you know those types of things um sometimes there will be transactions in fact almost always there will be tr a certain number of transactions not many you know handful five maybe less uh transactions that you, you have no clue what it is, okay? You have no clue what it is. You end up asking the client at the end of the month, you know, hey, I've noticed a couple of transactions here. Can you help me out? What what was purchased, okay? Or what was this for, okay? So you're always gonna, gonna have that. As you work with clients, you will, you will do less and less of that to the point where you're probably not going to be asking them much of anything in terms of, you know, what this transaction is because you've gotten to know the business so much. You may have gotten to know that A1 rental, that's equipment rentals, I already know. So what are we gonna do? The vendor, this is money going out, we paid A1 rental. And we go ahead and just type it in here. And if we click add, it's going to add this vendor, okay? We're gonna add that as a vendor. Once it's added, it will save it, okay? It will save it and you'll, you'll never have to like add it again. It'll just automatically come up. Category, well, we know that this is equipment that was rented to do a landscaping job, right? So equipment rental. Okay, and here um, they've got a couple different ones, but let's just put it in the equipment rental expense account. Okay, so this is on the PL. This goes on the PL as an expense in that equipment rental category that we saw. Okay, so this is how the, the PL and the balance sheet get populated with data is just us 
categorizing things. Okay. Now there's other information you can add here. Again, there's lots of detail to QuickBooks, a lot of which we don't use, um, but at times you can use it. And when you click add, this will now add it to QuickBooks. Okay. Things that have been downloaded here, this isn't in QuickBooks yet. It's not in QuickBooks yet. Okay. It's saying, hey, I've downloaded this from the bank. What should I do with it? Before I add it, I don't want to just add it to QuickBooks. You've got to tell me what to do with it first. Where does it go? Okay. And so this is us adding it to QuickBooks. So if we click add, boom, it's gone from this screen. It is now in QuickBooks. If we looked at a PL, we would see that $800 uh, listed under equipment rental. That's it. Okay. And that's basically what we do. We go down the list and we just add these things. Okay. That's all we do. But it gets better. Okay, that's already better than doing the data entry. Okay, we just entered that entered that expense. We could have gone up here to new and clicked on expense and created it into QuickBooks that way. But why do that when we can just quickly do it from here, right? So that's great, but it gets better. Okay, what if, what if we know that A1 rental, when we see that from the bank account, is always equipment rental and it's always the payee the vendor is always A1 rental. Well, we can tell QuickBooks, automatically categorize it to equipment rental. Just do it automatically. In fact, what you've seen here is that QuickBooks has already kind of suggested that. It has noted in this one, it's another $1,200 to A1 rental. And here there's an additional piece of information. They rented a backhoe. But either way, QuickBooks noticed that, hey, you just added A1 rental. Okay, and you called it equipment rental. So this one, I've already suggested that we use A1 rental as the vendor and equipment rental as the category. I've already suggested that. I'm trying to be helpful here. I'm QuickBooks and I'm trying to be helpful here. And that's great. That's really, really great. Okay, because now we can just, we wouldn't have had to do anything to this one. Okay, it's this one right here. We could have just clicked this add button. Now we're just clicking add, 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 add. And you'll find that most clients, almost I mean, 80 to eighty to 85% of their transactions will be, the, you'll see the same ones month after month after month. How cool is that? So that's like, that's, all, that's now another level of efficiency, but it gets even better, okay? It gets even better because what we can tell QuickBooks to do is not just suggest that it should go here, but actually put it here. Okay, we can set up, it's called a rule. I'm not going to go into how to create it. But we can set up a rule that says, hey, if a, if you see something from A1 rental here in the bank detail, assign it, this vendor, A1 rental, and assign it to equipment rental because that's what it always is. And you know what? Just add it to the books. Don't even put it on this screen. I don't even want to see it on this screen. When I log into this screen, when I do my work once or twice a month, I don't really want to see anything here. I want to see most of it done already, okay? And so I can create a rule that does just that, that just adds it straight to the books, okay? I don't even see it here. How cool is that, all right? So now we've gone from old school data entry where you're looking, you know, the, the black and white photo of a guy who's looking all stressed out and, you know, on a, on a adding machine and doing things by hand to like, now we're not doing anything, okay? How cool is that? That's really, really cool. Uh, you'll notice uh, just, just a, a little a, a little bit more about this screen his this screen here you'll notice that uh, you know some of these say there's a match found here for some of these transactions sometimes you know your clients will enter bills into QuickBooks we'll talk about bills a little bit later they'll enter bills and they'll pay bills out of QuickBooks you can pay bills automatically out of QuickBooks like your online banking okay electronically Okay, so you can do that in QuickBooks. So that's already in QuickBooks. By the time that transaction gets downloaded from the bank, we don't want to add it to QuickBooks again. And what QuickBooks does is it says, hey, I'm smart enough to know that I see this $114.09 in the bank account, but I see there's already this bill payment transaction in QuickBooks that you've already created. Should I add this again? Or maybe what I should do here is just match the two. Like these are the same. Don't create it again. We don't want duplicates in there. Don't create it again, just match it. And it will then match it. Uh, those transactions will not, not be duplicated. It will remove it from this screen. 
really, really cool. So again, saving tons and tons of time. Okay, bank feeds. We can enter bank transactions. We can enter credit card transactions here on the MasterCard. We're seeing all kinds of different you know, expenses that are made. Same thing. We handle them the same way. Now, once we finish with reconciliations, um, and again, these are the most common services that we provide. We've added all the, all the information to QuickBooks for the month. Let's say, let's see, what is it? It's September 6th. Let's say I'm working on August's data. I'm going in and I'm categorizing all of August's data. I've entered all of the transactions in my bank feeds. Great, now I can run reports that tell the client how much profit and loss, profit or loss they had, right? Well, before we do that, and this hopefully will put everyone's mind at ease a little bit because people say, well, boy, I'm just going to mess up somebody's books, you know, and then they're just going to go bankrupt and, you know, they're going to drive their car off a cliff and I'm just going to be responsible for all of that, right? Not really. Okay. Not really. Because there's a step that you can take to ensure that's, that, that most of what we've done is correct. And that step, uh, that next step and the thing that we'll always want to do um, for clients is called reconcile the books. Okay. Reconcile. We want to reconcile these accounts. Okay, what does that mean? Well, it takes the checking account and it sees, it looks at what we did in QuickBooks and we compare it to the bank statement, the actual statement from the bank. Okay, and we make sure that everything matches up. Okay, so that's under the gear menu. We go to reconcile. Okay, and I'm not going to walk through a reconciliation. That's, you know, more in depth than what we need to go into here. Um, but we, this information comes from the bank statement. You know, the month, the month, you know, they, they started August with 5,000 in the bank. I look at the bank statement, they ended with 10,000. And then yeah, I use the, you know, eight, uh, the date of the bank statement here and I click start reconciling. And what I do is I look at the bank statement and I look at each transaction and I put a little check mark next to that transaction in QuickBooks. Okay. And then at the end, It'll zero out. It's, it says everything matches. You're good to go. You have some reasonable assurance that you're, you're, you've put things, um, your bank and credit card accounts are accurate. Your bank and credit card accounts are accurate. Okay? How cool is that? So little checks and balances there for you. All right? Then you can run over and run your reports. Let's run a report. Let's look at profit and loss. And let's just leave it at all dates here. Just this, this is the entire year so far. I just wanted to see something. If we go down to... Equipment rental, 912. If I click on that, hey, check it out. I can see that $800 expense I added, okay? We can run this report and we can provide this with, to the client, okay? So we can run this report, we can run the balance sheet report and we can give them the information that they need to run their business, okay? That right there represents 80%, up to 80% of what you'll do. In fact, for a lot of clients, this is all I ever do. That's it, categorizing transactions, Reconciling reports. Done. All right. That's pretty cool, right? All right. Now, real briefly, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna run through a couple of the other services um, that you can provide. And this de just depends on whether or not the client needs it. Okay. Uh, one of those, and again, we're gonna use this, uh, we'll use this. Well, actually, we'll just use the new menu. One of those is accounts receivable. In other words, we might help the client create and send out their invoices to their clients. Okay, what client are we going to send an invoice to? Amy's Bird Sanctuary, we did some work there. Okay, well, what kind of work did we do? Okay, we did some design work. And a lot of this, this stuff is pre-populated already from that lists menu we talked about earlier. Okay, we did like I had 10 hours of design work at 75 bucks an hour. That's 750 bucks. Boom, I can save and send this to Amy. Amy can pay it online. Customer gets paid. Life is great. That's accounts receivable in a nutshell. Okay, we might do that for some of our clients. We might also do, I want to leave without saving. We might also do accounts payable. Remember accounts payable? Bills. Okay, we might create bills. We get a bill in the mail. Who would we get a bill in the mail from? Well, I don't know if Bob's burger joint is sending us bills, but hey, maybe I'm Bessie. I'm doing the books. I'm doing the bookkeeping. And Bessie sent uh, a bill for a thousand bucks, her monthly bookkeeping. Okay. And again, we're doing this for our client. 
our clients, and if we're doing it for the client, we're probably Bessie, okay? But uh, you can add, an, uh, add a bill um, for any uh, for any vendor. Uh, you can click save, and not only can you save it, but your client, you or your client, depending on you know your relationship as it grows, um, can pay it automatically online. No more writing checks. No more, you know, ha- it's a, literally a click of a button pays this bill. Okay, so you might be entering bills for clients. All right, entering and potentially paying bills. What else might we be doing? We might be assisting with payroll. Okay, if we look at payroll, payroll, I will be, I want to be very clear. Payroll is not something where we're actually calculating how much people are getting paid and paying taxes, payroll taxes and filing the forms. QuickBooks does all that for you. Okay. QuickBooks does it all for you. And if you don't use QuickBooks for payroll or if your client doesn't use Quick, QuickBooks for payroll, they'll use something like ADP or Paychex or Gusto or third-party third party payroll providers that basically do, they, they pay the employees direct deposit, they file the payroll tax forms, they pay the payroll tax, everything. Pretty much our responsibility when it comes to payroll is that we might set up the employees, we might add the employees to the system Okay. Um, occasionally, we may run payroll. They might tell us what you know what what uh, what employees are being paid. If they're salaried employees, or if these are hourly employees, we determine how many hours they worked. We might plug that information in and click the Run Payroll button. But once we do that, we're basically done with the actual running of the payroll. Okay. People get paid at that point. The payroll companies take care of everything. The last thing that we'll do is that if you're not running payroll in QuickBooks for your client. We want to make sure that that payroll information gets into QuickBooks, okay? Because that payroll information, that represents expenses and liabilities and things like that. We'll want to make sure it gets into QuickBooks if we're not using QuickBooks for payroll. And really great uh, piece of information is that all of these big payroll companies already kind of plug into QuickBooks, okay? We just have to set it up. That way we don't do anything, okay? We don't do anything, okay? Again, not all of our clients will have employees, so we don't even worry about that sometimes, okay? Sales tax, I talked a little bit earlier about sales tax. If I have a client here that sells dog collars, for example, let's see, let's let's create an invoice, okay? Uh, again, this represents me selling something. An invoice represents me selling something. I sold something to, doesn't matter who it was, but let's say I sold a, a, a dog collar, but it's called lighting, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to go in and create a new, I'll create a pump. Let's just say it's a pump. Um, and this pump, when I sell it, you know, I'm selling something tangible in my state. It'll depend on the state. Says, hey, you better be collecting sales tax from the customer. And then once you get it from the customer, send it to us. Okay. We click this little checkbox here. Okay. A little checkbox here. And let's say, you know, it's being sold in California here. It's going to calculate if this checkbox is checked, the ta- sales tax. And it's going to track sales tax for us. And in a lot of cases, you can pay the sales tax. Everything can be done through QuickBooks. Just clicking, just clicking, you know, uh, um, making sure everything's set up properly. Okay. As long as it's set up properly and we're tracking um, sales tax for the items that we're selling, everything's done for us. Okay. So sales tax is something that we may just, you know, set up. Again, very straightforward. Okay. And then... And then um, the other thing I'll mention is that for like a, a lot of things for like clients who have sales tax, typically they like they may be keeping inventory, okay, tracking inventory, okay. So they have a stock of dog collars or pumps or something like that. QuickBooks can keep track of inventory as well. Again, if you're working with a, like service based businesses like chiropractors, I work with tons of service based businesses, no inventory. Okay, but QuickBooks does allow you to track inventory as well. Okay, both when you purchase it and when you sell it, and they'll keep track of everything. It'll alert you when you're low on dog collars. Okay, pretty cool. All right, that's pretty much it. That's that's in a nutshell. Those are that 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 encompasses most of what we do as bookkeepers from a high level. Okay, from a very high level. The last thing I would like to do, uh, and I'm just going to open up the that expense that I added, okay, for that equipment rental from the bank feeds. One thing I'd like, just like to point out, because I like to make the connection between 
you know, what we do in the bank feeds and how we get these transactions in there and how they actually affect the accounts. Okay. The, um, the, the accounts, the profit and loss accounts and the balance sheet accounts. Okay. And it, just as you're learning, it can always, it's, it's always a good idea to, as you kind of do some of these things, what's happening behind the scenes? How do we know what accounts this is affecting? Well, we know just by looking at it, you know, this, uh, every transaction, important to know, affects at least two accounts. Okay. At least two accounts. That's, that's always the case. In this is, in this case, this transaction, we know it's affecting the equipment rental P and L account, but it's also affecting another account. Okay. And that account is the checking account. You know, if that money is going out, that checking accounts goes, goes down and the equipment rental expense account goes up. Okay. So we've got accounts moving in all kinds of different directions based on these transactions. A really easy way to determine what accounts are being affected is that you can go down and click on this more button and then transaction journal. And this will actually tell you what's happening behind the scenes. Okay. And as you get it, you know, start learning bookkeeping and accounting and things like that, um, however you're learning it, whether you're learning it online, you're taking QuickBooks training, you're taking a mentorship program like mine, whatever it is, as you're learning, it can be a, a good idea to come in and take a look at the types of transactions, uh, the type of accounts that are moving. Okay. As we can see, the checking account and the equipment rental account are the two accounts that are moving. This is what's called a journal entry behind all of these transactions is a journal entry, a journal entry. Like uh, th these things used to be called journals, you know, uh, all of the, the keeping track of all these accounts. Okay. And a journal entry moves these accounts up or down based on whether you um, debit it or credit it. We're not going to get into debits or credits, something that, uh, that you learn um, in, in the process of learning bookkeeping. But depending on whether you debit or credit a particular account will determine whether it moves up or up or down. In this case, the checking account, we it's moving down. We paid $800. That checking account moved down. Equi equipment rental, that expense went up by $800 because we now have an expense. Okay. So one thing I wanted to point out there, um, let's see, do I need, no, I don't need to share my screen any longer. Um, let me take a couple of questions before I get into, you know, how to get QuickBooks for free and how long it takes and all that fun stuff. Let's turn that off. Um, S you are saying working with clients with inventory, is that pretty involved? Does it require a lot of hours? Uh, in most cases, no, if you manage things properly, it does not. Okay. If everything's managed inside QuickBooks, um, you're good to go. Okay. You just want to make sure things are set up properly, but no, in general, it's not, um, it's not too, too, um, uh, too cumbersome. Uh, will this be played again? I came on late. Well, it'll be saved here in the Facebook group. Uh, if you're watching this on Facebook, uh, which it looks like you are, but it's also going to be on my YouTube channel. Okay. So it'll always, it'll live on. It'll live forever. Uh, Lindsay. Hey, Lindsay. Uh, you're asking uh, if I can go over AR and AP again and re-explain how we determine when pricing, whether we're charging for that. That is really going to depend on how involved we are in the process. Okay. Sometimes we may know what we need. In, like, let's say we're creating an invoice. Okay. We're creating an invoice. Sometimes we may know just because we've gotten to know the client really well, what goes on invoices. And so we can just send them out ourselves. Other cases, we are going to need some information, right? What did you sell? How much? Like what, you know, was there labor? And like, there may be some information that needs to go on these invoices that we don't immediately have. And so there may be, there may be some effort to get that information. So depending on what is involved is going to determine, um, you know, the scope the scope of what we're doing there. Okay. In general, when it comes to pricing, um, Lindsay, you have access to the pricing calculator that that pricing calculator is designed so that if you're doing, if you're doing any amount of work, creating the invoice or the payable, uh, like the, the invoice or the bill, if you're doing any amount of work, you want to be entering those as transactions. Okay. And then you're saying, um, the better question is what's the right way to ask them how involved we are. Ask them to great question. Ask them to, you know, if they say like, oh yeah, I, I need, you know, I, I, I'd love to have you take care of my invoicing. Um, ask them a simple question. Um, you know, great. That's great. Tell me about your current process of creating invoices, who's doing it. And what does that process look like? 
And that way they'll walk you through exactly what's involved. Then we can have a really good idea of what we need to do and how big this job is going to be. Does that make sense? Cool, 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 cool. Uh, Diane, you're asking about my mentorship program. Um, there is, um, uh, I have a couple of different options on my mentorship program. Uh, it's, um, you can pay in full. 1997, you can do 12 month payment plan, 197. Okay, you can do either of those, um, uh, whatever works for you. If um, I think there's, there should be a link, let's see, you're on YouTube, there's, there should be a link um, to watch my free training video, which I highly encourage you to watch um, to determine like whether or not it's right for you. Okay, to de determine whether or not it's right for you. It, it also includes though, it includes um, everything you need, like to get started, like you've got, I'll show you how to get QuickBooks for free and which I'm going to do here in a little bit. I show you how to, get, how to get free training. I show you some of the top two ways of getting clients. You know, I encourage you to watch that and, and the link should be in the description of the video. All right, cool. So let me wrap things up a little bit here. If you are watching the replay, feel free to drop in on, um, uh, drop, drop questions in the comments or the chat because I'll be notified of those and I can come back and answer those. But time it takes to learn QuickBooks generally, look, you're never going to know everything that you'll ever encounter out there. I don't care if you teach yourself, you take an online course like mine, you go to a community college like I did, or you go to Harvard, okay? You're never going to know everything that you that that you'll see out there in the real world that's not the goal the goal is to give a get get a solid foundation of knowledge okay to to know how to tackle most of what you'll see and then know where to reach out when you need help because you're going to run into interesting and unique situations no matter what that's what a mentorship program like mine provides but whether or not you take a mentorship program in general to get that foundation if you're able to spend about five to ten hours a week learning this stuff this really cool skill um six to eight weeks is where is generally where you can get trained up and start doing some some uh some decent work okay so again don't feel like, don't make it a, your goal to learn everything there is to know. If you do that, you'll never get started. Okay. You'll never get started because it's an impossible goal. Okay. The learning comes from doing. Okay. Learning comes from doing. And there's all kinds of uh, tools out there to ensure and resources out there to ensure that you're doing a good job while you're doing it. Okay. Uh, that's the time it takes. QuickBooks, how to get it for free. You can get your free QuickBooks account. It's free for bookkeepers and accountants. Um, it's free for us, free for life. It's all we'll ever need. Okay, so in some cases, it's free to start your business, all right? Um, go to bit.ly slash free QuickBooks. Okay, bit.ly slash free QuickBooks. Alternatively, you can just type in, um, um, just Google QuickBooks online accountant, okay? And you'll find it. Okay. You can also check out my free training. The link is in the description and I, I'll, I give it to you there. Um, cool. Let me answer our last couple of questions. Lindsay, you're asking, wanted to ask if you could give us a few examples of value that you could send to someone that either views your LinkedIn or when you're connecting with people, once they've added you on LinkedIn, I need help with a couple of specific examples. Let's see, it's getting cut off of what value looks like. Okay. So we talked a little bit about this before. Value is solving problems. Okay. Come up with some problems that that your target market has that are common problems that the people you're connecting with have and solve them. Okay. An example of that is, Hey, but, and if you need to, if Google will be your best friend in terms of what some of the most common problems are that certain types of businesses have. Um, but you can talk to business owners, talk to any type of business owner that, you know, um, but I'll give you an example, cash flow. Okay. Cash is constantly tight. What if you gave the top three ways of instantly, instantly freeing up cash flow, instantly freeing up cash flow? Okay. You could give them some strategies on how to do that. Okay. One of the strategies that I think is, uh, is really cool is, um, a lot of people I've had clients like this, they want to pay these bills as soon as they come in. Like as soon as a bill comes in, they want to pay it. They don't want it on. Like I had a client who was like, I just like, I don't like seeing a bill. Like, I don't want to like seeing a bill on my report. And I'm like, cash is so, we can't even afford to pay sales tax. Sales tax, 
again, is money that we've collected from customers that we are, it's not our money. We're supposed to then give it to the state. We're just kind of holding it. You know, we're the intermediary and this money was being spent, but yet she wanted to pay these bills because she didn't want to see them on her reports. So she wanted to, um, uh, use sales tax money. So cash flow was always tight. It was so tight. One of the best strategies you can use is to pay bills on the date they are due and no sooner than that. Freeze up cash flow. Okay. A lot of business owners, you think like, oh, don't they just naturally do that? No, they don't. That's one huge strategy. Using credit cards, making a greater use of credit cards, you get like a free 30 days to pay. Most business owners aren't aware of that. OK, they're paying off like they're, they're not using they're aware that they got 30 days to pay, but they're not aware of the fact that they could be making greater use of credit, responsible use of credit than what they are and easing cash flow. These are instant things that they can be doing. And there's a long list of things that you can be doing. So, Lindsay, that's the strategy that you're going to want to take. Find problems understand what the genuine problems are that they're having or the goals that they're having that, that they have and give them actionable steps to take. That's what you do, okay? Uh, all right, I'll take one last question. Marty, hey Marty. If you do AR, AR services for a client, does that typically include following up with customers that are not paying for your client or are not paying your client? Um, it may include like you sending out an email, um, but you're gonna wanna be very careful that you are not a collections agency, okay? Nobody, like not only like, is it not part of our engagement, but who really wants to be a collections agent anyway, calling up people and bothering people and getting yelled at by people on the phone uh, if it came to that. Um, so you just want to be very clear uh, and, and define what that scope is if you're going to be sending out invoices. Generally, it does not include uh, anything more than maybe a follow up email. OK, and, and that's it. If they don't pay beyond that, then it gets handled separately. And that's how you do it. All right, so let's wrap things up. I've enjoyed this. I've really enjoyed this. Again, if you're watching the replay, drop your questions into the chat, into the comments, whether you're on YouTube, Facebook, or LinkedIn, and I'll get back to you. Okay, I'll get back to you. If you want further information on a mentor, my mentorship program, my link to my free training video is in the description of this video. Uh, check that out. It gives you, you know, free QuickBooks and uh, shows you how to get clients and how to price your services, all kinds of fun stuff, actual things that you can use, okay? But in the meantime, you know where to catch me every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific. I'm gonna be right here on YouTube and in Facebook, LinkedIn. Follow me on all those platforms uh, so you can you know, stay up to date on the latest and greatest and get your business going, okay? So every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific. Until next time, if you wanna get in touch with me, comment or send me a message on Facebook and I'll get right back to you, all right? Have a good one and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.